thank you, Chair. Um, yes, the complexity of re-registration of cars when one moves abroad is certainly a concern for of European citizens and I have actually received letters myself from constituents who have struggled with this issue in the past. <clears throat> now the European Union is not just about uh, the big issues of fighting climate change, fighting crime, boosting the economy, uh, but also we have to work together to get a better deal for our citizens on things like solving problems such as re difficulties in re-registering re cars. And I agree with uh, uh, the Commissioner that this is also a, a, a blockage to the single market. However, we've seen, as uh, Ms. Ms. Styler has just said, um, people to the right of, our, uh, of the House, uh, particularly in the United Kingdom, and I do um, absolve uh, Mr. Harbour from this accusation entirely, uh, <laughs> running scared of UKIP and jumping on a story in the Daily Mail and Daily Express, uh, which said there was an EU plot to axe UK number plates. Um, to my horror, this, this, I heard this story myself repeated on national radio, uh, on the most popular stations on national radio on Friday morning over breakfast, uh, and I thought, well, what's going on here? So uh, I had a look at what was going on, and I found that the, actually there was an, an innocuous amendment um, suggesting that sometime in the future we might look at some of these ideas as a means uh, it's almost thinking out loud, looking for ways of, of addressing the problem. Now, the Liberal Democrats believe that a common EU number plate is completely unnecessary. But that's not the point. The story in the British press was completely wrong. And I hope the British press will recognise that. And the scaremongering of some of Malcolm's colleagues, not Malcolm I do uh, impress on you, over a vague suggestion so it shows that their real struggle is to have a clear message on Europe. Thanks.